Well, to the second uh, meeting of the minds, uh, or excuse me, meet the candidates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second, meet the candidates. Uh, the, our first was two weeks ago with uh, with, with Carol Kim, and uh, ton uh, tonight we have her her opponent, uh, Chris Kate. Uh, this is an event hosted by Open San Diego. Open San Diego is the uh, San Diego affiliate for Code for America. Uh, we're a group of volunteers who uh, try and help uh, government and nonprofit organizations use technology better. Uh, I want to put out a special thanks to the San Diego Foundation uh, for, for the great space they've given us and, uh, and of course, for Code for America for, for giving us money for the beer. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, uh, Glenn with uh, 47 Ronin, who's, who's videotaping this and, and will be uh, preparing this for, for online viewing uh, for, for all our uh, members and, and supporters who uh, don't ever leave their, their parents' basement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they do vote by mail. It's okay. Okay. As long as they vote, it's all that matters. Um, so, um, uh, we're going to get into some tech questions, but before that, I want sure. to give everybody a chance to get to know you a little bit Perfect. better. And so we're going to start with speed round. Okay. Democrat, Republican, Independent. Republican. Uh, Macintosh, Windows, Linux. Mac. Uh, Stone, Balance Point, Green Flash. Green Flash. Okay, great. <laughs> Did I get them right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, with those out of the way, uh -huh. tell us about you. Why are you doing this? Why do you sure. want to be an elected official? Um, is it just a lot of San Diego beer? <laughs> That's part of it. That's part of it. It's part of the, the reward. Um, well, first off, thanks to everyone for, for coming out and really appreciate you being here. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a native San Diegan. I grew up here. Um, I was born in Chula Vista. Parents split when I was, when I was young and lived with my mom growing up, and we moved around a lot throughout the county. Uh, Vista, Oceanside, Carlsbad, lived in Claremont while I was going to school at University of San Diego. I got my degree in political science. While I was at USD, a high school buddy and myself decided to open our own auto glass replacement business in Kearney Mesa, right on the corner of Claremont and Convoy. Uh, he still runs it today. I'm, I'm out of it, but uh, we got to do that. During my time in college, uh, helped pay for some of the tuition costs of going to USD because it's not that cheap to go there. But um, uh, it was a great experience being a small business owner at a relatively young age. So, uh, and I will say, if you need a windshield or a door glass, just let me know. I'll get you a really good deal. Um, but just been a part of that. Uh, afterwards, I uh, got involved in public policy, research and advocacy issues in, in San Diego. Started out working for the San Diego County Taxpayers Association. Uh, if you're not familiar with the organization, we're a 501c4. Uh, we do public policy, research, and advocacy. So I got to involve a lot of legislative policy issues uh, throughout the county, especially in the city of San Diego. Uh, at that time, it was a transition period in the city. You know, we, were, we didn't have any financial statements, uh, a lot of reforms going on the ballot. So we got to be involved in a lot of very technical issues from a policy standpoint uh, at the city. Uh, so in my seven and a half years with the association, I took what I call my sabbatical uh, and spent some time working for then Councilman Kevin Faulkner. I was his director of policy and his consultant on the audit committee. Um, the audit committee in and of itself is probably the most boring committee <laughs> on the council, but it's probably the most important one. Uh, we, deal, we did a lot of issues related to the city's independent auditor, uh, working through the adoption of all the city's financial statements. Uh, which was at that time really important. We were adopting, was it five or six financial statements in a matter of 13 months? So it was extremely important from a uh, understanding how the operations of the city work and being up to speed on all those issues. I got to be relatively close with, be a part of. Coming back to the association, uh, we were involved in a lot of uh, reform efforts, uh, looking at uh, pension reform, specifically in Prop B in 2012, I was uh, closely a part of and getting that passed and implemented from an from a, uh, outside advocate perspective and getting it passed at, at the ballot box. Uh, kind of why I'm doing this is I care about the city. I grew up here. I'm staying here. I'm going to have my family here. Uh, I'm recently engaged, a little over a month, and so you know, we're going to start our family in San Diego, and we have a future here, and we care about what direction our city is going in. And so I want to make sure we're a part of what I think is 
kind of the rebuilding stages of, of the city. I think we're on a good track of moving fo- moving the city forward. We're coming out of uh, the, the recession, uh, hopefully, and expanding job opportunities in the city. And so I want to make sure we're on the right path moving forward. Um, from a kind of a personal standpoint, one of the big things that I'm, I'm really involved in is uh, leadership development, especially for youth and the younger generation. I've spoken a lot at different groups about how we get uh, high school kids, college kids, politically and civically engaged in the city, especially within the uh, API community. Uh, I'm, I'm Filipino, my dad was born in the Philippines, and so I really care about making sure that our youth are understand the roles that they play and the voice that they have, not only voting, but serving on boards and commissions, on nonprofit boards, just being socially and civically engaged and active, and that's something I care about. Um, it's really important, especially for the district that I'm running in, uh, District 6, which is 34% Asian uh, in, 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 the, in the area. And so I want to make sure that uh, there's leadership there and helping encourage and grow uh, that base of youth to come forward and, and be politically and civically engaged. Appreciate it. Um, so I want to move next into some, some of the tech questions. Perfect. And, uh, you've, you've omitted your wonky. So... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to hold punches, uh, <laughs> but before I do that, um, I, I, I'd be remiss if not mentioning our hashtag. Perfect. Uh, hashtag for tonight is uh, D6Kate. Meet I'm, D6Kate. I'm sorry, meet, meet D6Kate. Right. Um, so if, you, uh, if you're live tweeting this, if you have questions, uh, you can post them there as well. Uh, uh, but let, let, let's, let's get in, into the, the, the wonky stuff. Sure. Um, so you mentioned your experience on the audit committee. You mm-hmm. mentioned your experience with the Taxpayers Association. Let's talk email retention. OK. Um, so I presume you're, you're familiar with the issue. Um, yes. Uh, the, the, the interim mayor uh, uh, during his, uh, his, his tenure, uh, uh, there was a policy released that, that emails would start being destroyed after, I believe it was two years, mm-hmm. um, which is actually a pretty common policy in a lot of uh, uh, corporations have something along those lines. And, um, but on uh, the first week, uh, our new mayor rolled that policy back. Where, where do you stand on email retention? Uh, I supported the mayor rolling it back. And, and, and through my time at, at the association, we dealt a lot with other agencies uh, throughout the county that were looking at destroying emails after 60 days, which was Un- such an unheard of and the completely wrong policy to, to adopt. And so uh, I was definitely supportive of um, the mayor rolling back that policy, not having um, uh, then interim mayor Todd Gloria adopt it. Um, we made sure we said that at the Tax Force Association as well, too. And so uh, I'm definitely not in favor of having it. So do you support indefinite, or indefinite storage of email? It's something we should consider. I mean, it's just something we should consider uh, not just on, on a cost standpoint, from a policy standpoint, I, I think a lot of the the discussion framed around, well, it costs too much to retain these emails, the data, all that, which I think um, from everyone, especially in the community around the county, called BS on and said that's not the truth. And so uh, I think we had to f- find whatever that balance is. But whenever anybody says cost is a prohibitive uh, situation, that's why we can't do it, uh, I think that's a red flag that uh, everyone rightfully raises as why we shouldn't be doing that. But um, I don't know what the balance is, but um, we'll have to figure that out. More than two years, less than forever? Probably, yes. (laughs) (laughs) In perpetuity, probably a little less than that, yes. Um, Let's let's talk about another issue that uh, this community has been uh, quite involved with, the open data policy. Mm -hmm. Have you been following that that board progression? Mm -hmm. Uh, so so uh, the, the, the council did approve funding an open data yep. director, yep. Uh, but no other staff at this point. Yep. Um, so have you read the, the open data policy? Yes. What do you think of it? Um, I think there's a lot of room for the city and whoever the new uh, open data chief data officer ends up being to work with the community because then there's things that have to do like the compliance plan within a series of 18 months. Uh, after adoption. I think there's room to work with the community and others to determine what the data sets are and what they can publish, what's available, what they should be working on in the future. Um, So I think there's a lot of opportunity to work with the community on what 
exactly will go on each of the department websites to figure out what is most important in terms of data uh, to the public. I think I wouldn't want to have data sets be put online that are really don't say anything <laughs> and don't have and don't have anything. But I think uh, there needs to be an open dialogue, just as it was with the policy itself, and what should be placed online. So, so you've clearly been paying attention to the city for for quite a while. What do you think are the the top data sets? There needs to be. So, for instance, I, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but every month the city puts out a monthly period report. It's a financial period report, and every month there's 12 periods, and then there's the final CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, that's adopted by the city. Those period reports outline all the revenues and expenditures based on departments, type of revenue that are done monthly. Um, all those things are presented in a very formal report, which is great, but it's really tough to extract the data and have it be manipulated, I don't say manipulated, but used in, uh, in different ways to do uh, time series analysis, things like that, that can be done. I would love to have the raw data that's in those period reports placed online. They're already done, they're developing the reports, let's get the, the raw data that goes into those and place those online. Uh, in my experience working with the association, we do a lot of time series analysis, and we do a lot of data sets. Um, you know, it allows us the, the data that we extract from either audit reports or budgets or whatnot, adjust for inflation, and, and do our own review and analysis. So uh, anything that's financially done and placed within the CAFR or these period reports can be placed online. They already have the data. They develop the reports, which is a lot. I mean, there's a lot of data that goes into some of these financial, uh, financial statements that can be placed online. And kind of what I want to do um, uh, when I'm on the council is test the limits a little bit on what can be done and placed on the city's website. Um, right now, <laughs> uh, council members who want to place things on the city's website, it takes a long time to do. I think they're limited in what they can do. And so uh, what I've proposed and what I will be proposing and what I want to have done is have more of a uh, an open source website that's not really controlled by the city. Um, and that way allows you know my staff who does who's going to be doing policy work um, and the data sets that they use for their analyses place them online. If others or organizations or nonprofits or individuals have extracted data from the website that isn't already provided by the city in that raw form, upload it to our own website. But try to bring. Um, more of government to individuals and residents within the district. And what we're proposing, what we're going to be proposing to do is have that type of website and then go out in the community and do town hall discussions about this is the type of data that's available to you. Um, what do you want to see? What do you want to have on this website that would be helpful for you in understanding government, holding government accountable? Um, but. I don't want to be just struck, be be set by limits placed on us by city staff and what they do with their website. So, so I know there's an effort to, to revamp the city's website. Correct. Um, but um, let, let's assume for a second that that goes nowhere and we're stuck with the same archaic website sure. we've had for decades. Would you go and take some of your your budget and and uh, launch Absolutely. a separate website? No, I'm I'm gonna do it nonetheless. I mean, I don't know how long it's take to redo the website. Um, you know, I know that. My, me personally, and, and having someone do their own website, it could probably do it in a matter of weeks. <laughs> um, so, you know, if I have to pay for it myself, I'll pay for it myself. That's fine. It's 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 not overly expensive to do it. Um, so let's just let's just do it and and put this put this data uh, online. I mean, we want to. I had a, a I met um, someone who works for uh, USAID and does uh, disaster mapping. And uh, we talked about a number of different apps that can be done um, strictly around mapping. I would love to have a, a, a format where uh, I have a, a map of the districts online and you take things like potholes, for example. We can give staff reports on potholes. When were complaints submitted? When were they done? Are they in progress right now? I mean, those are simple things that can be done, um, but we're not doing that for some reason. They're, they're not as simple as you, you, you think. Well, I, th I think when, when, when you get into I, the city uh, bureaucracy, you're going to Sure, but we can, we can see, we can know when the claims were submitted, when the route slips were done, 
and then at least say, okay, where are they status-wise? And then when they're completed, we can say, we got these potholes, uh, these, these filled at this time period. You know, the city kind of does it now with on their, on their CIP mapping uh, mm -hmm. program, but it's, um, you know, kind of layered within the city's website how to get there. I think you're going to find a few few challenges with with a lot of the systems right That's now. That's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's why we're having this discussion. Uh, I need but, feedback. This is the things I want, but, but, you know, but no. you're the expert. <laughs> but I, 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 love, I love where you're going. Um, and that uh, getting through the challenges is, 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 sure. is, is going to be big. So let, let's talk a little bit more about your, 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 um, your office sure. and your budget and, and mm -hmm. what you're doing. So um, we've talked about some open data stuff. We've talked about the overall city finances. What about your own budget? Would you open that up real time? Absolutely. Uh, email? In terms of? Uh, so there, right now I can, I can submit a PRA request sure. and get email from a council office. Mm -hmm. Would you go ahead and just release that as open data? That's a. I've never. Th I haven't thought of that to be honest. <laughs> and put it in, in real time. Um, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, to be uh, honest, <laughs> I mean, am I giving you my email password and everything? <laughs> no, no, no we, we, we'd have a script that takes okay. care of it. For <laughs> I, I have. I haven't thought of that to be honest with you uh, of having it in in, in real time. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, we'll let, we'll, we'll, we'll sure. let you think about that. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, and then um, this one I'm not going to ask you in real time, but with a slight delay, your calendar. So yes. after events, yes. will you publish it? Absolutely. And it, yes, okay. we're definitely committed to that. Absolutely. Um, I want to move on to a, a less, less um, pleasant subject in a lot of ways. Um, sure. I think a lot of us have been following the news out of, uh, of, out of Ferguson. Yeah. And and the kind of the horrible things going on there, uh, community at at odds uh, with its own own police department. Um, and it all comes down to one shooting. Obviously, there's 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 issues layered on top of this, but but the trigger point was one shooting, mm -hmm. where uh, nobody really knows what happened. Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand on body cameras for a police department? I'm supportive of uh, the city moving to body cameras. The one thing that I want to make sure of is developed uh, on the front end, and, and I haven't been following what's been going on with any type of policy regarding this, but it's, I don't want to get to a point where we haven't thought through as a city and as a department, what do we do if something were to happen in the future? and the public or investigations are asked for about kind of how the re the release of the f of the of the footage of that. You know, what's the policy behind so, so all of that? What what what? Do you, where do you think that policy should go? Is this this is this public information that should be quickly released? That's I think that needs to be that needs to be determined. I don't know what the right answer is, but I would rather us start thinking about that now before getting to a point in the future where no really nobody really knows what the answer is. And I would. Presume that all those stuff that had been negotiated with uh, in the police officer association and the mayor. Um, do we have a third party person be a part of that? You know, I'm I'm kind of open to, to discussing that. Is it the city's independent auditor? Is it somebody else? Um, but I just want to start thinking about making sure that we're just not saying yes to the cameras, but not having the policy behind how it's going to work. So so so. There needs to be a method Correct. For, for how it gets released. Absolutely. It needs to be an independent body, yes? I don't know. That's And that's kind of, I think, the discussion needs to happen. I mean, I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know what the right policy says. But I haven't heard, at least, and that may be going on right now, is the development of what that policy is. Okay. So it's, it's something you're unsure about? And well, I just want to make sure the discussion is happening. I don't want us to get you know, two years from now, three years from now, and something, unfortunately, something happens, and we're having to answer these questions, and we could have done this all on the front end. That's why I don't want to happen. And I think, and, and uh, I'd, I'd have to double check, some, uh, but I think we're already there. I think Good, already, perfect. Well, no, I think we're already there in that there's footage. Oh, that's And oh, we already that, have oh, that, um, that's not good. <laughs> problems of uh, well, right. determining how it's going to be released. Absolutely, and that's what I think um, we, we, we'd get ahead of ourselves a little bit, and we need to start thinking a little bit more thoroughly about some of these issues and what, the what, internal what, operations What's your of it. concerns about it, releasing the video? I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't thought all, all that way through. I mean, I don't want to 
I don't want to have things potentially rush to judgment and having it any type of either if there's a trial in place or something that everything gets done in the court of public opinion prior to having any formal either a trial or investigation go on. I know I, I understand the kind of the want that we need to know these things now, the public desires them, all that, but I also don't want to impede upon anybody's due process rights, things like that. So anything needs to be thought through, um, but I just don't want it to not carry it along the way. So I just want to make sure we're thinking about those <laughs> things. That's, that's all, I'm not just getting ahead of ourselves. And that thing too is, is more on the, uh, in terms of the policy is the infrastructure behind it, you know, and having, making sure that our police department has the resources to transmit the data, store it, all those things, you know, and, and uh, I've been on ride-alongs with PD where, you know, of course they don't have the infrastructure to do their own jobs during, during their shifts. You know, their communication system on the laptops go out, uh, they can't get their, their calls in, things like that. I mean, those are real issues that need to be addressed as well, too. That, that, that's, that's a, a great uh, place to transition to, to, to the next topic I want to You're talk welcome. about. <laughs> so I really appreciate it, because otherwise it's going to be a really awkward transition. Sure. <laughs> uh, um, so it's the city contracting for, for IT. Uh -huh. um, uh, you, you probably know the, 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 the history of the, the Data Processing Corporation in San Diego. Uh, for those in the audience who don't, back in the 70s, there was yeah. a well-intentioned concept of, of forming a nonprofit corporation wholly controlled by the city to do IT and that they'd be able to go out and work with other cities. It ended up being, I think it's, it's safe to say, a disaster. Um, it, it had, all, in many ways, the worst of government, nonprofit, and uh, private sector all rolled into a nice little bundle. So uh, the way out of that was to take it, basically cut it into three pieces and hand it to three multinational corporations. Yes. Um, ATOS, CGI, and Xerox. Yes. Um, so the rough summary of how that's gone is service hasn't improved, but the cost has gone down a bit. Yes. Um, and the police still have uh, systems that are unreliable, and that goes through every city department. How do we fix IT contracting for the city of San Diego? From my understanding is the IT budgets are essentially developed and siloed in with each of the individual departments. And it, there's not one, as of yet, one department that oversees the IT needs of each individual department. They're kind of siloed in one another. So, uh, you know, Public Works has their own IT budget and they're doing it for themselves, purchasing, contracting, so on down the line. Um, and what I would want to go back and look at is are we developing a strategy to kind of bring that all together where we have one strategic plan on where we want to be? with departments and um, their IT budget so we can have a, a little more firm control over it. And I think part of it was, you know, the development of, of 1SD and the ERP system was to try to limit budget cost for IT services. And, you know, obviously that hasn't really happened as of yet, but are we positioning ourselves and transitioning in a way to do that? Um, and I think as we start doing that and, and bringing them, IT budgets away from individual departments, we can start setting our own goals as a city on what we want to accomplish. So, you know, it's it's a lot of questions that need to be asked um, about where we're at, what are our future goals, where do we want to be, where are we currently, what are our milestones to get there. Um, we need to start thinking in those terms, I think, when it comes to, you know, IT websites and another perfect example. Let, 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 so let's talk about sure. one SD, the, the, the move to SAP. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be about a $20 million project. I think we're now past $70 million. Um, and I it's, think so, yeah. it's still not working well. Right. Um, at the, the, the most recent uh, budget meeting, uh, the, 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 the department uh, told the council that essentially, oh, we just need more training. Uh, mm -hmm. There was recently an independent report that, that talked about how tasks are now taking longer with mm -hmm. one SD. 
is it time to, 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 to kick SAP to the curb and, and say it's $70 million badly spent, but it's time to stop flushing money down that? I don't know if I'm, I'm quite there yet. I think what, again, needs to happen is go back and I'm a, I'm really big on strategic planning. That's, I mean, I'm really big on goal setting, having measurable objectives, and trying to measure success or failure. And that's what I think we need to do when it comes to uh, not only 1SD, but another, a number of different issues in, in the city. And figuring out where do we want to be? What are, what are our goals? And if we keep moving the goalpost, it's easy to say we're not going to do this, we're going to scrap this, or or whatever. I I want to make sure that we say for certain, you know, what are we need to do from this point moving forward? What are our goals, and what are the milestones to get there? And if we're not there yet, then we'll we'll pull the trigger and and, and scrap it. Uh, but I haven't been in those discussions to see where we're at yet, so uh, I would be hesitant to say, let's just flush it out, we're done, let's, mo let's, let's move on to something else. Um, but if we're able to set some of, these, some of these goals from this point moving forward and give ourselves timelines of when we want to have these accomplishments by, uh, then we can make a more educated decision on what we're going to do with it. Um, so, you're, you're, you're in, the, in, the, in the quick questions up front, you, you, you described yourself as a Republican. I think that was the first one I asked. Yes. So uh, I'm still Republican. <laughs> okay, is that still the case? <laughs> um, uh, so I, I'm I'm don't want to put words into your mouth. No, please. But Come but on. I'm I'm presuming you 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 tend to to, to lean towards outsourcing, comp managed competition, that sort of thing. Well, there's a difference between outsourcing and managed competition. So okay. I want to make sure that you have so, that. Okay. So, so clarify. There's a difference. Point. Outsourcing the city can do direct outsourcing and just put some service up to bid. Okay. The city can do that. Managed competition is allowing the private sector com to compete with city employees on providing a service. And there's a number of criteria that's done. We have an independent review board that makes a determination who they would uh, recommend getting the contract, and then council may or make a decision. Um, so there's competition between the private and public sector under managed competition, and outsourcing, we're just saying we want to outsource that, those services. Um, what I am for, when a bottom line comes down to it, is making sure that the greatest amount of services are granted to or given to residents for the lowest cost possible. And so I don't care if it's through managed competition or business process reengineering or whatever the case may be, as long as an efficient government service is providing, being provided to residents, that's what I'm for. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Sure, absolutely. Um, so with IT, mm -hmm. where we've ended up yes. um, uh, is we're heavily, and correct me if my terminology is wrong, That's we're heavily outsourced. Uh, that, that, that the vast majority of the city's IT is being handled by these three large companies. Right. Um, to, to the, and, and there's very little technical um, skill within the city, from what I can tell. Are you asking for a job? No. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a related question of why I don't want to work at the city. But, um, uh, <laughs> but, but um, uh, to, to the extent that we are now, I think, at eight months without a IT director. Yeah. Uh, the, we have an interim director who came from, I believe, waste management. Okay. Um, no, no previous IT experience. Apparently a decent manager, but this is who's running our IT department. Because, the best I can tell, there's no bench. There's very little IT <coughs> experience sure. within the city. Sure. So, do we need, as a city, to make a concerted effort to hire more technical people and bring some of that work away from the private sector and back to city employees? Here's, here's my, I don't want to just, Whatever it is, I don't want to hire people or do things just for the sake of doing them. I'm going to go back to it. It may sound like a broken record when I go back to it, but it's understanding where do we want to go as a city? Are we planning out why we're doing these things? I don't want to do things just for the sake of doing them. Um, I want to make sure that we have an, what's our end goal? Where do we want to be? And then what is the process to get us there? It could be hiring more. IT uh, individuals in-house and having them work 
uh, on issues throughout the city. It could be keeping it the same place it is. We're just asking in our contracts that we want uh, our contractors to do these things in order to get us to this this end goal. So that's what I think is 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 what we haven't done yet. We haven't done this long term planning as a city on whatever pick an area, whatever it is. Where do we want, where do we want to be and holding ourselves accountable for the actions that we're taking? Um, that's what I think is is somewhat in the role in the hands of the council. I mean, as a council, we set policy. We're a legislative branch of government. Our job is to do just that. And we haven't just thought of those things uh, in, in that way. And um, I think that will help us guide decisions going forward in where we want to be, especially in terms of you know, an, IT, an IT budget, an IT department. So, so um you, 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 you joked about me working at the city and, and, and are you really applying? I'm really not applying. <laughs> okay. And, and, <laughs> I thought you said you were and, and, and frankly, um, <laughs> no technologist I know would want uh, to do it. Um, who's worth their salt um, is particularly interested in working in government. Why? Uh, Why? Uh, I'm going to ask you a question now. Why? <laughs> well, I, th I think there's a couple of things. Okay. Uh, one, have you been in City Hall? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have worked there. <laughs> you don't want to be there during an earthquake. I, my I mean, so, so, you know, you, you're, you're, the, the, you're looking at a working in a, frankly, depressing building mm -hmm. for um, limited salary um, uh, and with little ability to make a significant impact. Um, and certainly no, no, no uh, exciting benefits, whether we're talking stock options or, or free M&Ms, um, <laughs> which are all both there very exciting. There is candy in some of the uh, <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, so, you know, you've got these sort of multi-layer sure. challenges to recruiting good technical staff into the city. Um, on a related note, when it comes to government contracting, mm -hmm. Most small technical businesses in the, that I know of also don't want to apply for those. The, 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 the IT contracting process is so cumbersome and so biased towards large established government contractors that they'd rather sell to the private sector. I will, I will tell so you. So there's a two part sure, question. And, for and you. On, the, on the contracting part, I will tell you it's not just IT. I think we have some serious issues within purchasing contracting that need to be addressed, just in terms of the length of obtaining contracts, the process to go through it. Essentially, the cost for small businesses to go through and participate in the process is a very big barrier. So, so how do we fix it? Again, we make it just easier, limited. I mean, I, I, I mean, answering RFPs, for example, getting pre-qualified, making it easier for them. I mean, to go through a pre-qualification process and go through and just be considered in the interview process on RFP takes months, and costs are exorbitant for people who are small businesses. Um, you know, when you have limited employees, maybe three, five employees for a company, an IT company that wants to bid on a contract. I mean, you look how much it costs to, to answer an RFP and go through even the bonding capacity issues, all those things, probably, probably more than their net worth as a company. And so what are we doing to make it easier for these uh, companies to be able to bid on these contracts is a huge issue that we need, we need to sort through. Um, when it comes to the development of, of, of folks working in the apartments, I think uh, we're starting to move away and answer that, you know, asking employees for ideas, uh, efficiency ideas, having them participate in, in the rewards of that and, and giving them bonuses where need be. I think it's a great first step. But we need to make, always, always make sure that we're going to, going at it in a way we have an end goal, what's our plan, where do we want to be, and having some sense of accomplishment and getting there and, make, and achieving those milestones. So, so I have one last question for you, and then I'm going to see if there's some questions from the audience. Okay. Um, how do you see uh, working with the tech community in San Diego? What can we do better? What would you be looking to do with us? Ideas. I mean, that's what I am really, really want to make sure of, is that we're, I'm in a position where I'm asking the public and residents for ideas, solutions, um, obviously problems that do exist in the community, but I also want to say, feel, feel like, what, what are, do you think is the best way to solve that problem? And it could be just basic common sense solutions. Um, I kind of want to 
test a little bit the barriers of how we solve some of these problems and not just say for the sake of it, this is how we've done it for 30 years, this is how we're gonna do it. I don't, that is not acceptable in my opinion and how we should be moving forward. Um, but also looking from you know, the, the, the tech community, what are some solutions? What are some things that you think would better uh, allow for community engagement, for solving problems, all those things? And so um, I wanna make sure there's that open line communication that whatever issues you, you have or you see or, or problems that you're in constant contact uh, with me uh, about what those things are when it comes to website and maybe asking someone for a referral <laughs> on doing a website and how to do because I'm not that type, I'm not that person um, so uh, I I see a good good line of communication and good relationship thank you absolutely do we do we have any questions from the audience uh, any any tech issues that we haven't gotten into that can people... I ask you a question not too techy I, I, I guess so okay um, I'd like to ask if you were the chief information officer for the city of San Diego, what would you, Ben Katz, do? Oh, That's a good question. <laughs> That's, I want to listen to Okay, this. so, so uh, the, que the question well, was... Well, you don't have a chief information officer either. No, the, the, the question don't. is what, what would I do as chief in information officer for the city of San Diego? And that's a tough question, in part because we don't have one, in part because it's a term that's kind of unclear about what it is. Uh, so, but but I would say the, the the first thing we need to do is is simply increase the technical expertise of the city. Um, we are the equivalent of Fortune 1000 company, and we have one C level IT professional who's not technically C level, and that position is not currently filled. Uh, so. You know, if any other Fortune 1000 company, you'd have three or four people. You need to have a chief data officer, a chief in innovation officer, a chief, chief technology officer, and a chief information officer. We need that kind of expertise at the city. Um, I think, Chris, you're exactly right that we need to make IT contracting easier. Yeah. We need to bring in, we need to make it so that people, small companies, can come and offer their services at at a, a quick at, at, at a rate that works for them yeah um, you know there's many things that the city pays hundreds of thousands of dollars for or that they could get from a local startup in San Diego for and I, I hate to say the real number because nobody believes me if it's more than a tenth I'm gonna be really skeptical <laughs> yeah. so I'll say a tenth of that <laughs> less than a tenth of that <laughs> um, um, but the, 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 the big challenges are ones that I'm actually, yeah. in many ways, not qualified to handle. We, we do have these three large contractors. We're not getting away from them anytime soon. Mm -hmm. We really need a chief technical officer who both can manage that type of contractor and, and, yeah. and start moving us away from it. Uh, 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 we are spending way too much on yeah. far too low quality technology. Yeah. What other questions do we have? Chris, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, one thing that Ben was talking about, he was asking you, you know, should we bring more technology in? Your response was, well, kind of depends on where we want to go, what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand that that's a conversation that has to be had yeah. with multiple, you know, stakeholders at the same level. But specifically when we're bringing in somebody new, you know, we're electing somebody new. Sure. Um, a good bet on what they're going to get done is tends to be what they come in saying they're going to get done. Sure. And I would be just curious, you can answer it from a technology perspective since that's clearly where we're coming from here, but maybe take the opportunity to also talk about any other passions, but where sh where do you want to be? Yeah. Where, I understand the answer, you know, depends on where we want to go. Where, where, where do where, I want to be? It's just talking about me individually. Visionary sure, so. absolutely. So here's here's kind of what I want from a from a, a global perspective. Kind of after my term on the council, I hope to accomplish this, and it's kind of grandiose, but it's, it's essentially saying that the residents within District Six are proud of where they live, and they're happy with the services and the infrastructure that's around them. That's the first part. The second part is that there is a level of community and civic engagement in which people are pointing out saying, if not the city of San Diego, District 6 is an example of community and civic engagement across 
the globe, not just the nation, the globe. And that's my dream, that's my, what I would want to aspire to. Um, how do we get there? There's gonna be in bits and pieces. And what I am planning to do and I wanna do is develop that strategic plan with residents in District 6. Because it's not just about me where I think the direction of the district should go. It's also about leaders within those community and residents within the communities about where they want to go and make sure that they have a voice. But at the end of the day, I want to make sure I'm holding myself accountable for getting these things done. And it can't, you know, it could be very, very grandiose ideas in the strategic plan. You know, can we get those done in four or eight years? We'll have to see and evaluate that. Um, but after four years, I want to be able to say, going into it, this was our plan, this is what we want to do, this is what we accomplish. And these are things we didn't hit, and here's why. And this, here's how we can hit them if we had four more years in office. Um, suffice it to say that, again, I, I'm working on behalf of taxpayers, and I'm held accountable to taxpayers and residents in the district, but I also don't want it coming down from a, come from it from a top-down approach and saying, I want to do this, and damned if we do, damned if we're, I'm going to do those things. I think everyone in the district should have a say in where we are going, and um, stay tuned for that because we're going to be doing some stuff in the, in the future about that. But that's what I—that's kind of where I want to go. Does that vision of community engagement mm -hmm. and uh, involvement? Do you think that that has, that data and technology play a small role in that, or a large? Role? Huge role. A huge role, absolutely. And part of it is getting people to understand where they can go to get that information. It can be a as simple as a community calendar of saying, these are every everything that's happening in District 6 today or this weekend. This is how you can be involved in your area. Uh, it could be community cleanups or festivals, whatever. It can be, this is where you go to get information on um, the city's budget. You know, it could be simple things. How do you order a trash can, right? Replace a trash can. Right now, you cannot go online and order a trash can or replace a bin. You have to physically mail in a money order or a check and call customer service to order a replacement bin. If, if, if I lived in your district, you might have just gotten my phone. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, how, I mean you're going to miss, what, two pickup cycles by that, probably? Maybe three, you know, by doing that? It's just ridiculous. But... We need to be thinking about what's most important to all the to the residents in the district in order to get some of these things done. I actually built an app that the city can use to do that if you'd, you'd like. It's free. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the over. Um, if I were king for a day, right? <laughs> do we have any other questions? Um, we have more beer. I, I, I hope everybody will stay, chat a little bit, drink, drink, drink the beer so I don't have to take it home. Um, <laughs> really, I'd hate, to, I, I'd hate to take great beer home. Um, Chris, thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you for having here. me. I appreciate it. Thank great you so much. Thank you.